guys, how are you doing? I am good, thank you so much for asking. So obviously I'm back with another video. It's me, Kim, hey, how are you? Um, I was so excited when I found out that Beth was going to get her own episode on This Is Us. I'm not a committed This Is Us watcher. I don't watch every week, but I like the show whenever I watch it, and I love Susan Kalechi Watson. I love her. I'm obsessed with her as an actress. I think whoever writes for her does it so well. So I was so excited when I found out that she, we were gonna get some backstory on Beth, but not only that, her mother was going to be played by the one and only Felicia Rashad. So I made sure to watch the episode and I, I just loved it. So this is going to be a deep dive on the Beth episode of This Is Us called Our Little Island Girl. Whenever I do these deep dives, people say, it's not that deep, why are we talking? And it's like, girl, I like to go deep on television. That's what I like to do. If you don't, it's time for you to go now. Okay, so let's get into it. As soon as I saw Felicia Rashad on my television, something inside of me was just activated. It was just activated. There's something about her face, her demeanor, her carriage that is just so reassuring to me. Is there a way to watch Cosby show on bootleg? You know, obviously we don't want to give any money to Bill Cosby, whatever, whatever, but I just love her. So anyways, she comes on screen and she's playing the stern but loving elder that we all know and love and immediately or pretty soon after we see her Felicia Rashad whose name on the show is Carol she hurts her hip and that starts the action. Cut to Beth and Zoe driving down to take care of Beth's mom who is also Zoe's caretaker. Now we up until this point have not learned a lot if anything about Beth's background. We've obviously this is a show about the Petersons I get it I get it but Beth to me is the most compelling character on this show and I'm glad now that we are just getting a little bit of glimpse. So Beth and Zoe are talking and immediately we know that Beth does not have a good relationship with her mom because she is afraid to tell her mom that she doesn't have a job. Now, I guess there's like a reasonable kind of fear that you have of your parents or intimidation, I guess. But like, as a grown person, we already know something is off if you are still like, really scared like if you still have a lot of fear there's a difference between a reasonable amount of respect and like <gasps> what is she gonna say you know like that's different so we know something is off i gotta say i don't watch the show every week i've already said i don't do network tv like that but this is us has a formula and they do the hell out of that damn formula the flashbacks the time jumps in this episode were so good that were so well done so the first time jump is back when beth is a little kid they're sitting around a table who knew beth had so many siblings i didn't beth never talks about them we'll get into why that is later but what i loved about the first flashback personally was how they got the dynamics of black families right. I love that they were depicted with veracity, truthfulness. Bethany, Bethany, is this homework time or is this drawing time? Homework time. Is this homework time or is this drawing time? <laughs> Miss Zoe, you have something to say? I know you're new here, but in this house, we show respect. Sorry, Mama C. All right. In Beth's home, we see Carol uh, offering correction. She's stern. There's a hierarchy. You're not just going to talk to me any kind of way. That's a real, like, the hierarchy in a black family is real. There is definitely um, a marked difference between the dynamic between Beth and Carol versus the dynamic between Kate and Rebecca. In the black households, <laughs> we got rules. So I really appreciated that. And ostensibly, Carol, and I don't know what the husband's name is, but he's like one of those beloved black character actors who shows up in everything and he's great. Ostensibly, 
Rebecca and Carol are of the same generation. Now it gets a little, it gets a little um, muddy because of that horrible age makeup that, that they put on Mandy Moore and older Felicia Rashad has to be put back in time. But ostensibly, they're of the same generation, but it's not the same, okay? <laughs> like, these households are different. And I loved that we saw that. Another thing that I love about This Is Us is their, the writing is so tight. I love a callback. I love a trope, okay? Tell me what to hold on to, call it back, bring us back, tie everything up perfectly in a bow. I appreciate the, the skill that it takes to do that. This is us does that. There are a couple of tropes in this episode. The first one is the fact that Beth is such a beautiful natural dancer that she could dance before she could walk. Baby, you've seen how good our girl is. It couldn't hurt to just check the place out. She's our little island girl. She danced before she walked, remember? I also appreciate the discussion of her ancestral homeland, you know, the Caribbean, as the place where she was most connected to her innate gifts and talents. I think that's really cool and interesting. It reminds me of this Audre Lorde essay. Sorry, we're about to get into feminist theory. I can't help it. But she has this essay called The Uses of the Erotic. And like when we think of the erotic, we're usually thinking about sex and sexuality. But when Audre is talking about the erotic, she's really talking about um, our most innate being, our most natural selves and the, the power that comes from that. And I love that the center of this episode is connecting to your, your truest self. Letting go of new Beth and returning back to old Beth. Loved it. Another central theme of this episode is really digging deep into those family dynamics and the consequences of those family dynamics. Obviously, Beth is much closer to her father who is the freewheeling, free spirit, Caribbean man, Lucy Goosey, than she is with her mom, who is the disciplinarian. She makes sure that the trains run on time. She is the pragmatic one. And I, she is painted in this episode as pragmatic to a fault. I don't know if everybody got this, and maybe I get this because I'm a black woman who was raised by black women and know a lot of black women. But of course we know that Somebody had to do it and it was gonna be Beth's mom and pragmatism is a survival strategy when you are dealing with all sorts of structural inequality. As much as you might bristle at, you know, Carol's seemingly uptightness, <laughs> that's not a word, but anyways, as much as it might make you uncomfortable to see her be so stern and clenched when it comes to her daughter, I mean, it is in part a parent's responsibility to weigh risks and be practical and you know really consider what the effects of your children's choices are not only for them but the entire family like i said somebody has to do that job and carol did it in this world of little girl semi-professional ballet beth's parents are having to make some hard choices about what the future is going to be. And here we see the writers of This Is Up setting up their neat parallels. Let me just say, these people do not miss a beat. Even if I don't love this genre of television, I am impressed by the skill it takes to craft this stuff. Because we see here the parallel between Beth and her mom and her father and Randall. And they're not carbon copies, but they are intentionally drawn as rough sketches of each other. And then we see another trope when her father says, Abe, you heard the odds? Baby, when have we ever listened to the odds? So here is where that pragmatic Carol tension comes up. Because her mom says, okay, well, we're gonna do this but your responsibility is to be the best. We're gonna do this. Your father and I, we're gonna make this happen. But if you go here, you'll have to give it everything. You will have to be the best. Now, is this what you want, to work hard at dancing every single day? Yes, Mama. Now, I think a 
fair question is, is that a fair thing to put on a kid? Is that a fair thing to say to a child? Or is it the most responsible to say to a kid, we don't have it like that. We are not living in a world where we just have hobbies and we do whatever we want to do for fun. Our world is, if we are investing in this, we need to see some return. Now, I don't know if that's ethical, you know, like, I don't know if it's the most moral thing to do because there are real consequences for that. But I, of course, understand where Carol's coming from. Be the best. Who hasn't heard that? Well, if you're black, who hasn't heard be the best? Everybody. We all have. There are real consequences for that be the best, no matter what mentality. And we see it in Beth. And another consequence of that mentality is you grow up and you don't have a relationship with your family and you're afraid of your mom. I mean, you know, like there are there are trade-offs and everything, trade-offs everywhere. So in the 2019 world, Carol is still a pragmatist. We see her kind of um, poo-poo Zoe's career as a filmmaker to lift up Beth, who is uh, has a, a real adult job, but you know, Carol don't know that Beth don't have no job. And it's like, okay. <laughs> Another thing that just is so funny to me about this episode is are all middle-aged black women the same? Because I know that my mom has the exact same ideas about what work is supposed to be, what real work looks like, is it a hobby or is it a job, and there's just no room for amateurism. And that's really unfortunate. It's unfortunate that we don't have room to pursue our joys or to pursue our passions because of the demands of capitalism. And you can't ignore that, you gotta eat. And you know, if you got kids, you gotta take care of your kids. But it means that there's always gonna be a part of you that's unfulfilled. And clearly, Beth is struggling. Oh, I gotta say, teenage Beth, oh, such a good actor so good not only did she just carry this episode but she had susan kelechi watson's mannerisms down she did stuff with her eyes and with her body i was like oh you're you're acting okay so the show moves on obviously obviously a foundation of this show is that strong black woman trope and we really see it when beth's father is diagnosed with lung cancer and as soon as it happens of course Beth and Zoe are having an emotional reaction their children they're crying and mother Carol says stop crying what are you doing stop crying and it's like Carol these are kids it is completely unreasonable to tell children that their father or their father figure it's unacceptable to cry about that like you know we can talk about whatever and strong black woman or whatever. There is some real emotional damage if when you see children crying about somebody being diagnosed with cancer, your first instinct is to tell them to stop crying. Like there's something mentally wrong and we don't want to call a thing a thing because we don't want to upset people and we don't want to offend them, but something is not right mentally. There's a lot of tra unprocessed trauma. Zoe acts out, as she does, and Beth, you know, straightens up and sets the table or whatever. And her mom, Carol, and Beth are in the kitchen, and then that trope comes back up. You worked too hard, and now... Bethany, stop. It is not your fault that your father is sick, and you are not going to give up years of training. You're going to stick to the path you chose, and you will be the best. The problem is, and I think this was like a good twist on that, is Beth is not the best. She tries hard, she breaks her back, she goes to class. She's not the best. She does not have the stuff. And not only is she not the best, a new girl comes in who is the best and she's black. Oh girl, the hurt, like that's double hurt, right? Not only are you not, but you've been displaced by another black girl. <laughs> who can relate? Me. <laughs> I also think it's important to note that in this episode, it's acknowledged that, yeah, Carol is a hard ass. She is a hard ass. She's stiff upper lip all the way. But Zoe says something really important to Beth about how she appreciated being able to come into this household because, yeah, that hard ass 
offers stability. That hard ass makes sure that dinner gets served every night and that kids do their homework, you know, that the household doesn't come crashing down. And so, yeah, we have our critiques. We have our critiques, but we also recognize that like people don't know better. You know what I'm saying? If you know better, you do better. You don't know better. And a part of that damage is that stuff actually got done. We go back to teenage Beth. Teenage Beth does not have the sauce. She just, it's very clear by the middle to the end of this episode that it's just, it's not gonna work out for her. All of those years of her parents telling her, or her mom telling her, be the best RLs, is just, she doesn't have it. And this is where I really appreciated the messiness of This Is Us because it's not a happy fairy tale. You can do everything in your power and work hard every single day and want it with everything that you have and still not get it. Now, the tricky thing is with her mom saying, okay, well, our understanding was we were going to put all of our time and energy and resources into this and in return, you are gonna be the best. So. From Carol's perspective, she held up their end of the bargain, but unfortunately, Beth wasn't able to deliver. So then you gotta say, well, is Carol then wrong for going to Beth and saying, you don't have the goods? I don't know. That's what I love. You look, I love a, a messy text. I love it because I don't know. I don't know if Carol was wrong for saying, I know you wanna be a dancer, but it's not gonna work out for you. We need to do something else. We need to do, I don't know because on one hand, I think it is a parent's responsibility to offer the best guidance that they can, to offer the best counsel, to steer your kids in the right direction. And it's sometimes a part of steering your kids in the right direction, kind of shitting on their dreams. Maybe, maybe. Remember the the good days when um American Idol was good and we were all watching it and you would see those people on American Idol get up there and sing and they were horrible they were horrible singers and you say how did you get here at somebody at some point was telling those people that they could sing it was the parents it was the grandparents it was the friends it was the church members somebody was telling these people with no talent that they were good so, in order to avoid an American Idol situation, or um, what's that other show with the judges and the people with no talent, America's Got Talent. <laughs> in order to avoid those sorts of situations, is it your responsibility as a caregiver to say, look, it's not gonna work out, or is it almost abusive to say, your dream is dumb, uh, we gotta do something else? I don't know. What we do know is, Carol did what she thought was right at the time, which was deter her daughter away from her dream of being a ballet dancer. Now, now look, there are the American idols where you see those people who are terrible and their moms have been like, oh, you're so great. But then there's also like the Steph Curry situations where, I mean, I don't really know anything about sports. All I, I do know is that I guess people were saying that Steph Curry wasn't good. I mean, I guess he had to be good enough to make it into the pro, so he was pretty good. But the legend of Steph Curry is nobody believed in him and he didn't have the stuff and then he turned out to be this superstar. I don't know. You never know. It's a gamble. And what we do know is that black people do not have the resources or the stomach for taking huge risks like that. It's just not. We just don't have it. And another thing we know is a primary focus of most black parents is making sure that they're not going to have to support you as an adult. That's their primary concern. Are you gonna have to come back and live here? Beth's mom was definitely on that. I'm not, you can't come back here. So you need to have some stability of your own. But of course, there are consequences to feeling like you're not supported, like you didn't get the emotional intimacy or guidance that you desired. Um, that your dreams were not important to your parents. And of course, Beth is carrying around that resentment and it all comes to a head with this great scene with Beth and Carol. That's your big complaint. 
No air? Well, I can live with that. I promised my mother I'd push my kids as hard as she pushed me. My kids may not come around, but that's okay with me because I know you're all good. But I'm not good, Mom. I am not good. And I loved it. You know, I guess I love this episode because I just projected all my my personal experiences and my feelings onto it. <laughs> because I get both people in this situation. I get Beth being like, the only thing that I needed, I, I just wanted to feel free. I wanted to feel like I could be me. I needed that air. I get Beth. Like, I, girl, do I get Beth. But I also get Carol being like, be real. You're over here talking to me about air, for real. My partner died. I had to make sure that you and the rest of your siblings were okay. I. And while he was alive, he was the loosey-goosey free spirit. So then Carol had to be the alternative to that, even when he was lived. Like, I understand where both of these women were coming from. And another theme of This Is Us largely is your parents want the best for you. They are doing what they know how to do, but they are inadvertently fucking you up. <laughs> we see that with the Petersons. We see that here, right? It's not on purpose. There are people who intentionally neglect their children, who maliciously abuse their children, but most parents are fucking you up and they don't even know. They don't even know. Susan Kelechi Watson and Felicia Rashad, I'm calling them by their real names because what we saw in that last scene between them was acting. Girl, Felicia Rashad is about to get an Emmy nomination because they were acting with a capital A. There was so it was so heartfelt, it was so emotional, and she got what a lot of us who are dragging this childhood trauma into adulthood <laughs> really desire, which is an apology. I shouldn't have taken dance away so quickly. I'm sorry. You can't turn back time, you can't fix the past, you can't relive your childhood, but what you need and what Beth got in that scene, oh, such a good scene, was some acknowledgement of, I made some bad choices. I didn't do everything the right way. And I think just somebody saying, I'm sorry, does go a long way. Now, it don't go all the way, but that is a critical first step and trying to patch up those wounds, <laughs> those wounds, those gaping childhood sores. <laughs> those first stitches, she gets some, and then she gets to go back to her loving husband who is a fun house mirror version of her father who is always there to reassure her. And in that scene, when Beth is about to go into that dance studio, then we see the symmetry. Hey Beth. I know. It's crazy. People are gonna think it's crazy. Child, please. When have we ever listened to people? This is us writers. Yeah, y'all, y'all doing it. You like, y'all did it. I appreciate it. You know, I have critiques of network television and the the boxes that they have to um, fit their stories in because it does sometimes feel like they're painting by numbers in order to evoke certain kinds of emotions, and sometimes it can feel a little bit trite. But when I tell you that when Beth walked into that dance studio and she was running her hand along the bar and she saw little Beth, I cried. <laughs> I cried because I knew she was going back to old Beth and I was like, oh yes, like come back baby Beth. And now Beth is going to be a dance teacher. I loved this episode of this show. I thought it was so good in the way that network dramas can be good. It hit the right notes. The acting was good. The compos even the compositions of the shots were beautiful. The soundtrack was, I don't know who was singing that last song, 
but girl the soundtrack was perfect it was just a beautifully well done episode I'm pretty sure the writer of this episode was a black woman shout out to you I think her first name is Ebony I almost want to say her name is Ebony Williams but I feel like that's too black and stereotypical but it was just really great and of course the only reason why I watch these shows is so that I can project my own life and my own feelings onto it and this was the perfect canvas for me to be able to do that so I walked away from the Beth episode of This Is Us supremely satisfied. I love Susan Kalechi Watson. If we're gonna be giving people spinoffs, like if that's gonna be in the air or whatever, I want a Beth spinoff. I know Blackish is trying to do a, a bow spinoff. No, no, no. What we need is a Beth spinoff. It's so, I just love her. I love her. Get Felicia Rashad back to acting like, it was wonderful from top to bottom. Tell me how you felt about this episode. I just, I really loved it. I really don't have any critiques. Do I have any critiques? No, it, it gave me exactly what I was expecting. And that's all I needed, for real. So anyways, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you guys so much for watching up on Patreon. I made a little video about the two um, people I have a that I will not be arguing about not who I'm going anymore. We girl. are done. It's for her. over. There's no, the I'm not going back and forth with you. I'm that's not trying to put my friendship on the line. It's like, we are done. Um, obviously that's patrons only sign up over there at patreon there's lots of bonus content thank you guys so much for being patrons I think we're gonna hit like 250 by the end of this month 250 people that's crazy thank you guys so much um, send me an email buy some merch leave a comment be sure to sign up for the email newsletter I appreciate y'all so much I'll see you later watch this is us I loved it bye